Happy Wednesday, kittens. It is the 20th of November, 2013, and this is Not a Podcast, episode 49. Welcome, and thank you for joining me. I am your host, Amanda. You can find me on Ravelry as Wit, or as So Nitpicky on Plurk, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, or on YouTube. If you happen to be watching me on my YouTube channel, if you enjoy my show, please give my video a thumbs up. It helps to promote me in the search engine for others who are looking for knitting podcasts. And of course, for other podcasts you enjoy on watching on YouTube, please do the same. Spread the podcast love. There is not a ton going on this week. It's been relatively quiet. Mr. Nitpicky is finally on his way home after almost five weeks out in the training field in Texas. He has been 2,200 miles away, and this time around we haven't gotten to talk as much as we usually do when he's gone. Um, When he's usually out of state on training missions, he tends to get to call me at least once every couple of nights, and he usually texts me a lot in the evening. This time around, he was extremely busy and he had weird hours. And I think at most I was talking to him once every five to six nights. So we really didn't talk on the phone much. And then when he was texting me, he would have one evening where we could text a lot. And then for the next five or six, he I would maybe see four or five texts from him and they'd be very quick and to the point and just hasn't been a lot of communication this time around. He was supposed to leave to come home starting yesterday but thankfully they were able to leave on Monday instead. So as of last night he had made it officially to the halfway point and I'm hoping to see him maybe tomorrow night. If not for sure we'll definitely be seeing him by Friday barring any bad weather or mechanical mishaps. Knock on wood. As you can tell by the fact that I am uh, packed up in hand knits here, it is very cold. Our weather keeps jumping around between extreme heat and and very cold temperatures. It's been very difficult for my hair and my skin and the rest of me to adjust because as I start to get used to the colder air, it then warms up again for a couple of days and then goes back down in temperature suddenly. We just came off a jag where we were hitting 60 degree weather for a couple of days and we are back down to just barely breaking the freezing point again. It's been a little hard and I just like winter to make up its mind. Either it's here or it's not. Let's stay in the 30s to 40s or let's stay a little warmer or let's go colder and just stick with it for a bit. Last week I talked to you all about some patterns that I was enjoying that had just recently been released. And there are some more that have just come out that I thought were worth talking about. I like to keep the podcast as G-rated as possible because when I started this, it was more to do video entries for my friends to watch, which is part of where the name for this podcast came from, is that I insisted I was not going to start podcasting, that I was just doing work in progress Wednesday videos because it was easier to record than it was to type up the posts. And several of those friends had small children at home, and I was not going to be the person who teaches them a bunch of cuss words. And, yeah, so anyway, (laughs) I normally actually cuss kind of like a sailor. Once I'm comfortable, a lot of questionable things start coming out of my mouth, but I do my best to, you know, keep it clean when I know I need to. But right now there is a collection that just came out called Subversive Socks, which is I think 17 or 18 patterns by Tabitha Hedrick and was released by Cooperative Press. This is a collection of sock patterns that feature everything from slightly questionable stuff like the stinky socks to strong cuss words on them surrounded by pretty color work motifs. I think this collection is funny (laughs) and kind of awesome and I definitely want to purchase it at a later date and I can definitely see myself knitting at least three or four of the patterns out of the uh, the book and wearing them. So if you happen to have a love for swear words or slightly potty humor type stuff, I would definitely go check it out. It's currently only out in ebook format and I think it's something like 15 or 16 dollars for 17 patterns 
but sometime in December it's supposed to release in paperback if a, um, a physical book is more your thing. So this week I have been focusing on one craft more than others, which seems to have been the theme the last couple of episodes. So there's not going to be a ton of content to share today, but I figured that we'll just get right into things with knitting finished objects. Last week I had been talking to you about a sock head pattern inspired hat. The original pattern is by Kelly McClure. It's a free pattern. You can find it on Ravelry or I think, I don't know if she has a blog or not, but you can definitely find it on Ravelry. It's download there. I was using Spinning Fates Karma Yarn, which is a sport weight in the Scooby-Doo self-striping colorway, and I'm using US size 2.5 needles. And as of the last time you guys saw it, I had knit the deep ribbing and I had just Oh, well, it's not true. I hadn't just started the stockinette, but I was maybe an inch and a half into the body of the hat. And I had been mentioning that the yarn was a little stringy feeling, but I was loving the colorway. Well, I have finished the hat. It's been soaked, had a very long soak, and it's been blocked, but the ends are not woven in yet. And it ended up growing quite a bit. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting it to be. And I still love the colorway. Colorway is beautiful. The yarn has softened up just a bit. There's those beautiful... I love how self-striping yarns work up in patterns like this. Very pretty into the center of the hat. And as of the time when I was first making it, the brim was very slightly snug on my son. That He kept commenting on it. But now that it's been washed and softened, it, it's almost big enough to fit my head. And his head isn't quite as big as mine. So yeah, it's it turned out great. Still a little scratchy, not the softest wool, but it'll do. And that was all I managed to finish for the week. I do have one work in progress to show you and then another one that I will mention. So I have another sock head inspired hat on the needles, of course one for my daughter this time. I mentioned last week that anytime I make something for him, I kind of have to for her and they had both outgrown their winter hats from last year. So I had shown you some beautiful yarn teeny vintage colorway self-striping yarn on the sport base that I had had caked up forever. Well, I did get a chance to just barely start the hat. I've got a couple rounds with some of the ribbing. I've worked on this twice in the last week, so not a ton of time has been put into it yet, but it's looking good. It's it's knitting up very fast. The yarn teeny is slightly thinner feeling than the Spinning Fates Karma was. So I ended up giving this one extra stitches. I had to fudge my decreases a little bit on the other hat because I had not kept the pattern in multiples of eight, which works out for how the decreases go. So on the other one, I had multiples of four. I had to fudge out four first, and then I started with the Eight, starting with the uh, decreasing every eight thing that I was doing. I'm sorry, I'm not speaking very well today. This is the third or fourth time I've tried to record because I keep tripping over my words and I'm just kind of going with it now because if I continue waiting until I speak perfectly, this podcast isn't going to go out today. So I'm sorry if I'm, yeah, anyway. <laughs> So that one is working out pretty well. I believe it has an additional 12 stitches in it compared to the last one. The Scooby-Doo hat was done with a cast on number of 118. This one has a number of, I think, 130. That sounds right. My other work in progress is a very long-term one that is too big to show you and that might be a hint for longer term viewers as to what exactly it is but with the weather being cold enough again and really wanting to get it done before the end of 2013 i've brought the blanket of doom back out with a very doable goal of just wanting to do no matter what one row of progress on it per day if between now and the end of the year i do one row per day i can knit exactly one skein of worsted yarn out of the blanket. 
I have been using Barocco Vintage for it in US size 10 needles, which are very large. And after all the lightweight projects I do, those needles just, they seem like they're <laughs> gigantic. I may as well be knitting with PVC pipe. Um, train of thought got lost. Let's see here. Oh, anyway, I am very close to finishing this blanket and I have been for some time. The last time I talked about it was months ago, maybe even possibly pushing close to a year ago already. And I'm within a couple skeins of finishing. I need to, once my current one is done, take the blanket back upstairs, lay it on my son's bed, see how it's doing, and figure out realistically how much more knitting I need to do. I do not expect the vintage to grow very much with getting it wet. It, vintage is, I think, almost half wool, and then it's acrylic and nylon content. It's meant to wear longer, but it still has a decently wooly feeling to it and a nice amount of warmth. But because of the non-wool content, I do not expect it to really do what superwash wool would do and grow vertically like crazy or grow really wide. So I've been trying to make sure that I get it knit up to as close as possible to the length that I want. The blanket is very wide. I think it could almost spread out across my king size bed and cover the whole top. My son has a full size bed and I'm trying to make something big enough that'll fit on there. This is a blanket that was inspired by a, what was it, a Land of Nod comforter I saw ages ago. And yeah, I've been working on it. This is my third full year of pulling this out and trying to get it done. I would really like to get his done because I also need to start one for my daughter. But I'm thinking for hers, it's not going to be wide stripes. I'm going to do something a little bit more modular, either something like a modern log cabin blanket or a bear paw quilt or something that has a little bit more interest and I'm not just knitting really, really long rows of garter stitch for forever from start to finish. So hopefully very shortly I will make myself bring that blanket over here and show it to all of you because it is huge. It is at least as tall as I am now and it's wider than my arm span. It's just, it's, it's a big blanket. And now I want to take a minute to talk to you all about future cast-ons. For all of you lollipop yarn lovers out there who already have some in stash, over in the Lollipop Yarns group, there is a current knit-along going on called Lollipalooza. Lollipalooza is running from now through the end of December, and if you enter a finished pair of socks in it, you get a chance to be randomly picked to get a free skein of Lollipop Yarns and a chance to pre-shop an update before it goes live for everybody else. That's pretty exciting stuff. And part of this knit along is a pattern that is being offered up for free between now and the end of December, so if you want it, definitely download it, called Fruit Stripe Gum Socks by Leah Oakley, or Leah? Le I'm assuming Leah. Leah Oakley. It is an interesting pattern that she wrote up for self-striping socks. It's a top down with a gusset heel flap and a ribbing that's knit in such a way that the stripes do this diagonal stacking thing. I do not have a color printer to show you and I did not bring over an eye device, although my camera doesn't like them, but here is a black and white picture of the sock. Hopefully you get an idea and you can kind of see what I'm talking about here with the stripes knit up in such a way that they look diagonal. And it reminded her of the Fruit Stripes gum that used to be very popular if you were a kid in the late 80s and early 90s. Yipes, stripes, Fruit Stripes gum. Anyway, <laughs> that it's, it's a very interesting construction. Um, it has the ribbing and the diagonal ribbing and then she has some ribbing down right before the heel flap that snugs it in at the ankle there. Then you do the flap, you do a gusset, and then at the bottom of the foot, there's some more ribbing detail. I don't know if it'll come out on camera here, but maybe you can see it before you go through the foot and you go down to the bottom. I thought this was a very interesting choice, 
And if you knit your pair of lollipop yarn socks in this pattern, you get not one entry, but five for the free skein of yarn and the pre-shopping of the update. So I am looking to cast that on soon. I have four balls of lollipop yarn in my stash, none of which that I have currently used because that's been one of my kind of precious yarns. I haven't been able to bring myself to use it yet. And I dug out one to cast on these socks. And because I like to work two at a time, I had to break up that super cute iconic ball it comes in and I broke it into two 50 gram balls so that I can knit mine both at once. I am choosing to do mine in the fuzzy wuzzy colorway, which is a very neutral one. It's gray and light brown and black. If you are familiar with Lollipop Yarn and how she names her colorways, you know that she does not simply state the plain colors that are in her colorways. She gives you her, and here's her business card. She does her business card. That my camera does not want to focus on for some reason. Oh, there we go. And then on the back, at least when I was purchasing, she tells you the colorway and gives it to you. So this one is Fuzzy Wuzzy, which is seven rows of teddy bear, three rows of wet nose, seven rows of furry, and three more rows of wet nose. Or in plain speak, thick stripe of brown, thin stripe of black, thick stripe of, I'm assuming the gray, and another thin stripe of black. This is her 7525 Merino Nylon Base, and in 100 grams, there's approximately 420 yards in it. And I am looking forward to casting those on very, very shortly because I want to get done before the end of December because Greedy Greedy Me has a wish list about a mile long from that particular dyer, and I would love a chance to win a skein and maybe purchase another one for my stash. My other um, future cast on that will be casting on pretty much as soon as it gets here is last week I talked to you about the new pattern Francis the Sock Wearing Fox, which was written by Jenna over at Retro Lemon Studio. It's her new one that just came out and I had mentioned that I loved it so much because I have a Shiba Inu and they look a lot like foxes. Fox? Foxes? They are a very fox-like dog. And I loved the pattern. I don't have anything in stash for it, but I've been agonizing over what to do for my children for Christmas this year. And usually we don't do a lot because we live far away from our families. And every year we get huge packages in the mail full of toys and things. And we usually don't have to get much for our children because come gift miss day, they have a lot of stuff to open. Well, this year, my in-laws are coming to visit, as they normally do, and they bring their gifts with them. But my mother is also looking to send her gifts with them, because my husband and I grew up pretty much together. We didn't, we weren't aware of each other until high school, which is when we started crossing paths, because we were both in the AV club, ironically enough, considering how much, how many problems I have with tech. But we actually, our families live about um, less than two miles away from each other, back home. So my mother was thinking about just sending the kids Christmas presents with my mother-in-law when she comes to visit right after Christmas this year. So suddenly I am in this bind where it's like, oh, I can't get away with not really giving them anything because there aren't going to be a bunch of presents here waiting for them on Christmas day. So I've decided to knit them each a Francis I'm, I picked out two different colorways for now, and I'm going to kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. This is going to have to be secret knitting. It's going to have to be either at night or during the day, and it's going to have to live in project bags so that they can't see it. The yarn I want to use is not here yet. I ordered it from my favorite online yarn store, which is Eat Sleep Knit out of Georgia. And I ordered some Spud and Chloe sweater in appropriate colors. I love that, that yarn. I've used it several times before. It's lovely and it's soft. It comes in gorgeous colors. It's a wool cotton blend. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it getting here. I'm expecting it either today or tomorrow, depending on when it's shipped out. 
Next, I want to talk to you a little bit about the yarn I've been spinning. If you have been watching this podcast for any length of time, you know that I have been for the last couple of months, if not several, working my way through a Hanks in the Hood center pull bat. As of last week, I was almost done. You all saw it. There was that little ball left at the end that I was ply plying, not plying, spinning my way through for singles. Told you I can't talk today. I really can't. <laughs> And anyway, I finally finished. And if you're friends with me on Instagram, you've already seen the picture, but here is that last little ball of singles I was working on. It's finished. Bum, ba, da, dum. And I decided that instead of losing further momentum and stretching this project out even longer, that I would start plying. And in order to give the newest singles plenty of time to rest, I decided to start on the first ball of singles, which I finished like six to eight weeks ago. They've been sitting and resting for a long time. I am doing a chain ply, otherwise known as a Navajo ply by some, on my shocked high-low spindle. It might be a little hard to make this. Yeah, my camera doesn't like this. This first part of the colorway is mostly black. Let's see if we can get this more color accurate. Nah, it's more color accurate. And it is, I started off thicker on this spin. Chain plying gives you a three ply structure, which means the yarn is beautiful and it's very round. And I am getting something that is averaging anywhere from a heavy fingering to like a DK-ish weight right now. This might even be pushing into a worsted. As I get farther along, I'm definitely going to have thinner yarn resulting, but so far that first ball, which was the largest, is down to just this little bit left. I spent a good couple of hours on it yesterday and I'm hoping to focus and finish it sometime soon. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to get it all plied up because plying on a spindle is kind of difficult, to put it politely. Um, it can be very hard to get four ounces of fiber onto any spindle. And I have done it in the past. When I first started, I managed it all the time, but my yarn was very thick and beyond super bulky. <laughs> so I managed to get it all on, but now I'm not sure how it's gonna work. I'm thinking I might have to ply this up into two separate balls and work from those, but we'll see. I'm hoping that I can persevere and get as much as possible applied into the first ball and possibly even push through. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Again, knock on wood. I did do a little bit of cross stitching this week. I have been continuing to work on my Halloween spooky sampler from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery and I didn't finish much more than you saw last week, but this is what I have. I finished my N, I started putting in my candy, my Halloween treat bucket, and I am currently deciding how and if I want to modify this area right here, which in the pattern is written to be a ninja. I have discussed doing the same change in pattern I saw someone else on the Facebook Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery page do, which is to change it to Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street. Which I still think I would like to do. I'm trying to find a hole for this just a second. I didn't get as much time to work on that because I was spinning my butt off over here on what you just saw. And yeah, I'm slow but steady progress. I am still aiming to have my Halloween sampler done by the end of the year. And I think once my spinning project here is finished, I'm gonna take a short break from spinning and I'm gonna focus on cross stitching because there are at least two year long sampler projects coming out from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery next year that I really, really wanna do. Um, if you follow Amanda, who is Hey Pork Chop over on Instagram, she shared a picture in the last two days where you saw her project tray that she keeps on her couch next to her and she had this small pouch or pin cushion which had a bunch of Halloweeny cross stitch on it including 
the Frankenstein's monster and the bride of Frankenstein's monster on it, which was ridiculously cute and has not been released as a pattern yet. I asked her about it and she mentioned that on top of the 2014 Japanese fabric inspired yearly sampler they're releasing for January, they are talking about doing a yearly sampler that they're releasing in February and that Mr. and Mrs. Frankenstein's monster are part of that sampler. I want in on both. <laughs> so if I want to do that, I need to finish my current sampler. I need to start working on my woodland and I need to figure out how I'm going to balance three yearly samplers throughout the year, as well as trying to finish my autumn and kawaii winter sampler from the 25 square series. It's going to be a bit tough. If you are someone who follows my podcast through my blog, uh, sonitpiggy.com, you know that I actually made a real live blog post this week, which is the first time I've done it in a while, where I went back and I revisited my 2013 crafting goals and assessed how well I did on them. And because of this, and I did this because I've been giving thought to what I want to accomplish in 2014. And I will, in a show closer to the actual end of the year or the beginning of next year, talk about my craft goals a bit. And I think I'll do it on the podcast this year as well as in a blog post because I don't know if I did last year. Maybe I did. <laughs> anyway, I've been starting to give thought to what I can realistically accomplish next year. And I think it's going to still be a pretty cross-stitch heavy year. I am still catching up on a backlog of patterns that I already purchased all the supplies for. And yeah, I'm getting ideas for how I want to clean out my yarn stash, as well as how I want to go about with future purchases. I'm being, I'm flirting with the idea of cold sheeping, as some people like to call it, or doing a complete yarn and fiber buying hiatus for at least the first half of the year, which seems to be when I do most of my stashing in general. To give you an idea of how bad my stash is in terms of quantity, I'm going to shame myself for just a second here. I am going to show you the contents of one of those cubes back there that you look at every week because that is where most of my yarn hides is in those five. Now you may think that those cubes do not look like they can hold much. I have IKEA Expedit units which I had to buy online because there is not an IKEA anywhere near me and there is a series of cubes that you can buy at Target called Itso that fit them perfectly. They are 13 inch by 13 inch cubes. Doesn't sound that big, but they hold a lot of yarn. And I have two of these 13 inch cubes, <laughs> which are look really big now that they're next to my head, that hold my sock yarn collection. I have a bit of a sock yarn problem. And just to give you an idea of how much this holds, I keep all of my yarn in plastic bags in these cubes. Each of these bags is full Two sides, too deep, of sock yarn. And this cube happens to be my self-striping cube. I'm going to try to show you the contents of this entire thing without making too much noise. My apologies if it's overly crinkly, but just to give an idea, if you're just kind of looking and going, geez, how many are in there? There are roughly 10 to 12 skeins in each of these bags. So we've now seen two. Three. And each cube can hold four. So each of my cubes has roughly 40 to 50 skeins of sock yarn in it. And now that I've said that out loud and shown you, that seems kind of embarrassingly a lot of sock yarn considering that I have not been knitting that many socks lately. <laughs> 
So, now that I have shared the contents of one of my cubes to you, and you can see what a problem I have, and hopefully you're not trying to calculate the cost of my yarn stash, if you know the prices on a lot of that. Um, yeah, I have some slight stash problems. And then on top of those five big cubes back there, these little ones off to this side here have various little bits of toy yarns and other things in them. And I have a drawer out in my bureau out in the other room on that way <laughs> that has the coat yarn I purchased that I have still not knit up. And I have some more toy yarn stash hiding underneath my desk on the other side. It's a bit much. And I've decided that I think in 2014 I'm going to focus a little less on small putsy projects, although, I don't know, we'll see. I guess it's going to depend on how many babies come in and out of my life, if I want to knit toys, etc, etc. But I'm thinking about focusing on getting my sock yarn stash down a little bit, as well as knitting up a couple of my sweater quantities, and trying to get most of my yarn moved back into those five whichever direction that is. <laughs> so yeah, the last thing I want to talk to you about a little bit today is I have some small things that I purchased. Now, if you have been watching enough podcasts, you have probably been hearing about these Chinese circular, circular needles, 11 of them for $7 shipped to the U.S., I finally just got wind of these about 10 days ago, and I decided that, you know, for 50 cents a pair, I was curious and wanted to see. So I found them on eBay. I can link to the seller I bought from if anyone is interested. And I got a pack of these. These are all 32 inch circular needles. They are in British sizes, so they are not the same as US. Like this size 16 is, I think, a US double zero. And they go to a British size 6, which I think is a U.S. size 9. And I haven't taken any of them out of the package yet, but each one comes with a darning needle. They're called Q Premium. They are in English and in German on the back. They're meant to be kind of, I think, Addy ripoffs because I've noticed that they they talk about the Addy range here but you know that's what kind of happens a bunch of stuff comes out of Hong Kong and they, they knock off everything most of these are nice every single one comes with a darning needle but I have a couple of them where the needle is wonky not that big of a deal yeah this one's kind of bent that's not your eyes playing tricks on you it's sideways. I'm not expecting a lot of quality considering how cheap they are, but I thought, you know, for 50 cents a pair, it couldn't hurt to have a set of backup needles. And it looks like on the smallest sizes, because of how small they are, they seem sharp enough. But when you get to the really, really big needles, you can see just how blunt they are. Just They're very blunt tips are not all that pointy. And then on one of them here, there's actually a hollow slight hole. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see that. And I'm not going to open it because I'm already crinkling enough at you. At some point here, I will try these out and let you know how they work. But if you are like a lot of knitters and you travel by plane a lot and you're afraid of having your needles confiscated from you or you want to have cheap needles that you're not afraid of losing or you need them for just a quick cast on to keep in your car whatever it is that you have a need for these might not be a bad option for you especially if you're like me and you're a magic looper and you can do just about anything with a size 32 needle and the last thing I have been purchasing lately is I have been getting myself some new stitch markers all of my stitch markers are kind of missing at the moment, and I have a couple that I use all the time, but I can't find some of my other ones. So I went on to Etsy, and I got some stitch markers from 
Pretty Pearly. She has a website, prettypearly.com. And I purchased from her a couple different sets of stitch markers. I am a sucker for natural stone stitch markers. I love the beauty of natural materials. And I got this first larger set, which I think fits up to a US size 8 or 9 in fluorite. These are lovely, lovely stitch markers. They are a closed ring construction, if you can see that. I don't see anything that they can snag on. A lot of my stitch markers otherwise sometimes snag on me. And I got four of those in that set. And then I got an itty bitty lace and sock weight set that I think go up to US size four maybe in pink tourmaline. And they are just so lovely. They are milky pinks with little bits of like amber color in them and that set came with six so i am super stoked about those they are very very pretty same thing that same closed ring construction and yeah i decided to go on to my etsy list and treat myself to a couple of the smaller things that i've been wanting lately and that wraps up this extremely rambly not so elegant uh, episode of not a podcast I mentioned last week that I will not be podcasting next week and I wanted to remind you of that again next week here in the US it's Thanksgiving my children will be off school my husband will be home and quite honestly I don't know how much crafting I'm gonna get done between now and then and I it's been a while since I've had a break so I think I'm gonna take a week off and I will talk to you kittens in two weeks have a lovely day Bye.